This video will cover a lot of ground, including the AMC purchase signs, the lost FTDs, why shorts are bad, and a lot more. Let's start with one of the biggest Wall Street scams. This business deals for more than AMC does, even though it is much smaller and has no other way to make money. This is because, well, shopping in stores is great. The company in question is Cinemar, and it has grown by 105.3% this year. One thing that can't be said about AMC is that it's improving, but it's still interesting to look at this because it would show that the box office is better. When the box office does better, most stocks in that industry do better too. This is even more surprising when you consider that AMC is the biggest company in this industry and has more new ways to make money than Cinemore. You can see why AMC isn't up 100% when you look at the most important factor last time, it was said to be 992 up to 95. We do know that retail holds the majority. The institutional holding of Cinemore is at 120% right now, which is why it's going up and AMC is going down. You can see this here. Here's a great example of either how smart companies are at sharing information or how stupid they are when they want to change how people feel about shopping. There will be no $300 million movies in 2024, according to the movie business. This movie made $635 million and Jews made $277 million. The piece talks about how AMC's price goal dropped from $9 to $8. The fund also thinks that no movie will make more than $300 million in 2024. Since this was written in 2023, we already knew it was a bad idea. It was clear that it was wrong. This year has a lot of great movies. Deadpool and Wolverine Peed were two movies that made $635 million across the country. Because they talked about these things, they always tried to keep people from going to AMC. They should have talked about movies or IMAX. The box office has an effect on more than just AMC. Another company that won't be affected much is AMC. They have so many ways to make money that they can still make more than these others, even if a movie doesn't make $300 million. Their goal was clear to get people to buy AMC seats. They don't want people to go to AMC for the second reason. You can see that AMC is down and C-Market is up 10.15% by looking at how the year has gone so far. This is what we meant when we said they are always trying to take over and change AMC, but the shorts are wrong in the end. AMC has had a lot of technical buy signs in the last 30 days such as ATR. This is clear from a quick look at the expert buy signs. There have also been five technical hold signs. These have something to do with the RSI, MAKE, D, CCI, ADX, and R. Since there are no signs to sell, there are lots of things to think about. Start with easy things. You can be sure that AMC is going up because you know how it works and that IMX and Cinemore are also going up. This proves that AMC is a good buy. We need to look at many things now. In this case, these signs, maps, and price changes all show that AMC is being sold at a great price. Right now, the buy alert means that people are planning to buy, hold on, or not sell. We talked about and know that. Many things point to AMC being a good buy. As I already said, you can see how the ownership of institutions has changed over time. Yes, you read that right. The fact that naked shorting is possible shows that AMC is a good option. To see why some people say naked shorting isn't real, just look at what the South Korean government does. It's not just that country, there are others in Asia and Europe as well. If this is a multi-billion dollar problem, anything is possible. At the moment, South Korea is firing many businesses and saying that people who do illegal short selling could spend the rest of their lives in jail. In order to make it clear that naked short selling is a thing, they have all spoken out against it. They are also trying to stop it and regulate it from happening, which is what we know. To give you an example of a naked short, Think about why AMC is going down when the industry is doing well and competition is going up. This is clearly due to naked shorting dot, and this chart shows that the AMC short interest ratio needs 12.91 days to cover itself. This makes it clear that there are a lot of short shares for AMC. The number of shares now stands at 57 million, but we know that this is self-reported information. This means that we don't really know how many shares are being shorted, whether it's offshore, in FTDs, or information they don't want to disclose. Because of this, we'll never know the real size, and in the past, hundreds of millions of shares have been shorted, and how billions of fake versions of AMC are being made. This is what we talked about, and this is how we know that naked short selling is definitely affecting AMC and having a huge effect on how well AMC should actually be doing. Also, why is GFTD data missing for September 20th, when 61 million shares were traded? That's the same day that Chewy had 9.4 million FTDs, so there's no way that GME could have had no FTDs that day. Whatever they were up to is about to blow, so a lot of things were happening at the time. There were yelling kids coming out, 
along with all of these other things. On the other hand, GE and AMC have had lost STD data in the past, and there have been times when the FTDs actually went down. These are the things we're talking about when we talk about how they're trying to hide their tracks. The manner in which the FTDs demonstrated that they were over-leveraging their short positions on AMC and GA and GME was something that we were interested in investigating in the past. Consequently, the short sellers realized that we were able to see the amount of debt that they have and the number of shares that they are refusing to pay for AMC. As a result, we are witnessing this right now. Even until even until now, we are still seeing these FTD data going missing and quote, ku quote, missing. Because we know that they just don't want to report the real data anymore, they don't want us to realize truly how over-leveraged they are. And again, one of the biggest things that these short sellers that institutions are always trying to say is that they are out of AMC shorts, they're out of GM. Shorts they have fully covered. But then if that is the case, why are we still seeing such an abundant amount of FTDs for both AMC and GME realize this if they are out of the shorts and AMC price going up isn't affecting anyone apart from benefiting the people who are invested and it's not damaging. You know these over-leveraged short sellers, why are they still manipulating the price, why are they still releasing these articles, and why is there an abundance of FTDs, and the only reason for that is that they are still stuck in this PL they haven't covered. So any increase in the price of AMC will undoubtedly hurt them and their capital. Also, if GME decides to become an online store that sells tokenized things, what type of revenues can we anticipate from the company? According to what I am aware of, when you compare the GANFD marketplace to Amazon, you will find that GME users pay a transaction fee of 2%, which amounts to more than $1.5 billion annually. It is something to take into consideration if you are an owner in GMEA or if you are simply interested in the topic. One of the topics that we discussed with GME prior to their announcement on the internet was the possibility of them collaborating with AMC. There has already been discussion about how powerful that will be but as I mentioned earlier, it is beneficial for both GME AMC stocks to go up. This is because if GME goes up first, it will damage the shorts, which will lead AMC to go up. On the other hand, if AMC goes up first and hurts the shorts, then GME will go up. Consequently, it is irrelevant which stock goes up, we all have to go up, and the only way to keep this game going is to have solid company management capabilities. I believe that if GME were to accomplish this, it would provide them with a decent understanding of how they may proceed. All that is required of them is to ensure that they make prudent use of the vast sum of money that they currently possess. A few times we have discussed how essential it is to keep in mind that the amount of money that banks in the United States have lost in the past few years is seven times greater than the amount that they lost during the financial catastrophe that occurred in 2008. It is because they pay short sellers a significant amount of money that they do this. One of the first things that banks do when they experience a loss of funds is to sell goods then they call back loans, and then they do other things. In order to repay their loans, short sellers will be required to cover their bets for the short position. As a result, if financial institutions and short sellers suffer losses, they will also suffer significant losses. We appreciate your time, and I look forward to seeing you all again soon.